Thursday Big Breakfast where that song got really weird at the end there. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got um, Anne Bryce on the phone. She's the Chief Executive Officer uh, of Achieve Australia. Um, are you there, Anne? Yes, I am, Kristen. Great. Okay, thanks for joining us this morning. Now, um, I understand that you guys are, um, are organising, you're part of a great... Um, you know, a great organisation that organises um, services for dis- people with disability around the right area, is that correct? That's right, yes. So can you tell us more about what you guys do and what you're hoping to achieve at, Kroll, at the Kroll Home site? Uh, well, b- more broadly, our organisation supports over 550 people with disabilities across uh, metropolitan Sydney and we provide a range of accommodation, employment, day programs and vocational pathways. Yep. Um, at Crowell Home, we're incredibly fortunate that we have um, uh, four and a half acres of land in Ride that we're looking to develop there. We currently have uh, 30 people living on the site okay. and we've got um, over 80 people going to a day program on the site as well as all the staff and volunteers on the site. Hi, I'm, uh, it's Matthew here. Just out of curiosity, what level of disability do you actually cater to? two and four, like what are, is it just low level disabilities or is it the more obviously extreme ones as well? Yeah. Look, historically the group of people that we've supported have been mostly people with intellectual disability and mostly people with more significant disability. Um, more recently we've had a much broader range of people that we've been supporting with some, in perhaps acquired uh, disabilities throughout their lifetime. So it's quite a broad range of people that we've supported. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We've just got some bad feedback at the moment. Uh, okay. the, the phone's going off a little bit there. Okay. Okay. So, um, what is the redevelopment of of Kral, uh, of Kral Pro, uh, It's Kral House, is it? Kral Home. Kral Home. Uh, mostly people in the local area have known as that. So, so what, exactly what level of redevelopment are you guys looking at doing? Look, that area, Ride Council had said that they wanted to do medium density housing in that area, and I think when we first um, or there's been some talk for many years that uh, the people involved with this site had thought that it would always be redeveloped. They just didn't know how and when. But when uh, it became apparent that the council was looking for medium density, we looked at, well, what does that mean for the site that we have and how could we work that and fit that with our strategic uh, plan for the future and how would that benefit people with disabilities. So we're, we're thinking and what we've put together and proposed to the Department of Planning Infrastructure as well as spoken to council about is having medium density housing, so apartments on the site um, that people with disabilities could live within with the wider community. So have you actually been pr- uh, approved for this? Uh, we're going through a public exhibition <coughs> phase at the moment. So we've actually had the Director General requirements issued last September last year and we've been talking to our broader community for uh, over a year now. So what do you need from the community, from us, for, for, for the people who listen? I guess it's just an understanding and an awareness that we're going through this phase of the planning process because we're not doing anything significantly out of step with what the Council was looking to do. But there was some height... Um, that need to be considered and so we're inviting people to come and talk to us about that um, and we're having a community information session on the 8th of September at Meadowbank Primary School between 6pm and 8pm so if people are interested, live in the local area, want to hear about what's happening, why we're doing it, what our plans for the future are, we're really keen to have them come along on the night. Okay. Is there, a, is there a website that they can register at or get more information from? Yes, there is. And we've got the um, on our website, which is www.achieveaustralia.org.au, we've got um, some information about the media release that we issued when we um, went to public exhibition. And there's also been ads in the local paper as well as letterbox dropped to the local community. So, I mean, obviously you're, you're affected or... We, we do have issues with the phones here, so I'm our apologies. <laughs> Obviously, you're looking to, to, to develop the site. How many people are you looking at being able to put onto the, site, the new site once it's really been redeveloped? Well, there's, there's, the project itself would have 470 apartments, so it's medium density um, apartments that go from the remaining heritage house would stay on site, so it's a single storey, and there'd be some buildings around that that would be single storey. The apartment sizes would be from two storey, possibly up to seven, depending on what happens with the planning. And uh, we'd imagine that we'd like to keep as much ownership as we can on site, 
And obviously any development like that um, would also need to have some uh, adaptable design units within the complexes and we'd probably be keeping a bulk of those ourselves um, and that's the hope. And within the numbers that we keep, um, we would have um, uh, a portion of those for people with disabilities who might actually be living there today, some who might be actually living in the border community. Fair enough. Mm. So the, the entire project isn't actually specifically for the, uh, well, for Achieve Australia, for, for the for the disabled people, it's more for uh, to be able to give you uh, a long-running source of income possibly and that kind of stuff to help keep the project going? Yes, that's right. It, not only would it give us, it would put us in a really strong financial position and it means then we could use that to build, buy and you know, purchase housing in the broader community specifically um, designed for people with disabilities. We've got a really, because we've got a really broad range of people that we're supporting and we have a very, a fairly significant number of people living currently in rented accommodation and as you know the rental market's pretty tight <laughs> yes. and it's you know, not too good when you, you know, already um, don't have much income and you're reliant on a disability service provider to find you know, something in the rental market. We keep getting pushed further and further out west to find that rental accommodation yes. and that makes it pretty tough for you know, the person staying in contact with their families, going to their day programs, getting to work. So we'd want to be in a position that we can actually buy and build in a local area and this will give us that ability to do that. Now, look, that, is, that sounds fantastic. It's, mm. it's definitely well worth So what do you need from our listening audience? We, I mean, obviously we need to be able to help support this, yeah. this worthwhile program. Yeah. I guess to get behind us and support us and come along and have a chat to us and, um, um, you know, talk to us about, you know, what you think about the project and uh, just the general support of the community would be fantastic. Has there been, uh, sorry, has there been any, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, arguments against the project. Has anyone, you know, kind of piped up and said, no, we don't want it? Look, I think there's always, there's always at the core of these sorts of things um, a couple of things because there was, you know, for what purpose was the land originally given to the organisation and how are we going to use that and are we doing the best that we can for the organisation? And people, the old Crowd Home has been in the area known to the local community for 50 years. It's a really significant site. And so there, I think there's been some anxiety that you expect to have around um, developing a site like this. And so I think things like, you know, we were really pleased when we got the heritage study that said that the, the original Telegara house, that's the heritage house on site should stay. Yep. And so we're going to respect that. And we were also keen that the name Crow, which was um, William Arthur Crow, who was the original um, benefactor, we wanted that name to be kept in the site heritage and known into the future. So we're proposing that the site actually be known as Crow Garden. So we keep that name. No, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least you're respecting uh, the original wishes of why you got the land, but at the same time using it for a far more, uh, you know, more practical reason. Yeah, and I think I mean, there is another point too. That it does obviously cause anxiety for, you know, the staff and families of people living on the site, what's going to happen for my family member. Mm. And we've been working really over the organisation over 20 years with what was originally, I think, 96 or 98 people originally lived on site at the large, at the height. But that was back in the early 1990s. Uh, as at today, um, there's 29 people living on site and that number keeps moving yes. because of the changing needs of the people. And of course, we have to keep working with those families um, around the concerns that they might have, um, and that's pretty important to us. And look, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary initiative, and uh, it's a very worthwhile cause, and it's great that you're you know, trying to provide accommodation for you know, disabled people close to their families and, and you know, to the support network, and um, I, you know, it's a great initiative. Um, just quickly, um, just repeat that website for people to get involved again. Sure, www.achieveaustralia.org.au and in the releases too there's been a 1300 number but I don't have it in front of me. Oh okay, that's okay, but people can find that on that website, yeah? Yes. And we're also going to put up uh, links to that website on our appropriate um, uh, um, 
Facebook pages and hope we'll put it up onto the radio page as well. Yeah, yeah um, that's terrific. And finally, where was that meeting at? So it's at uh, the Meadowbank Primary School in Thistle Street um, at six, on the 8th of September at 6pm to 8pm. So next Thursday. That's next it. Thursday. That's it. Wonderful. Next Thursday. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anne, for, for calling in with us. That's Thanks, fine. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Great. Thank Take you. it easy. Bye. Bye.